The next thing we need to do is get our controller and our receiver to talk to each other. That process is known as binding. But before we do that, I need to walk you through the steps of updating the firmware on the receiver and the controller to the latest version. And the reason for that is in the version of the firmware that these ship with, there is a rare but serious bug. Then we wanna make sure that that bug doesn't affect you. In addition, there are just some new features in the latest versions of the firmware that are worth having. Now, I've tried to make this as simple for you as possible. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna look at the bottom of the radio. There's an SD card slot and just with your fingernail or some pokey object, you're gonna get that out. You're gonna take that SD card out, take it over to your computer and with an SD card reader, you're gonna download the files that are linked in the video description. There's a link to the firmware files. I've gotten the files you need off of FreeSky's website. I've put them in one place, easy for you to download. You're gonna put this SD card into your computer. You're gonna download those files and you're gonna copy them over to the firmwares folder that's on your SD card. So go into the firmwares folder, just drag and drop those files from your downloads folder or wherever they downloaded from onto this SD card. Once that's done, you're gonna come back here and you're gonna put that back in the radio. Great. The next thing to do is to get this wire harness, which I told you to set aside earlier in the build, the wire harness that came with your RXSR receiver and that has a servo plug on it. We're just gonna plug that into the receiver and then on the underside of the radio, this right here is a servo plug. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that servo plug in. And you'll notice the servo plug has a little tab off the end of it, so it can only be inserted one way. We're just gonna press that all the way in, like so. The next thing we're gonna do is turn on the radio. Welcome to OpenTX. Oh, thank you. I got a warning here, don't worry about that. If you get that, just press the exit key till you get to this screen. Then I'm gonna long press the menu key to get to the radio setup screen. Then I'm gonna press the page key to get to the SD card contents. I'm gonna use the jog wheel to go down to firmware. I'm gonna click the jog wheel one time. And in there, you should see these two files, which are the same files that you copied to your SD card from your computer that you downloaded from the link in the video description. I'm gonna highlight the RXSR access 210.frsk file. I'm gonna long press the jog wheel and I'm going to highlight flash S port. And what that's gonna do is that it's gonna flash that firmware to the RXSR, which is plugged into the servo plug on the bottom of the radio. That'll take a minute, don't interrupt it. I'll see you in a second when it's done. When that's done, it'll say flash successful. We'll just click that and we can unplug the RXSR and set that aside. Then I'm gonna highlight the ISRM-N-210.frsk file. I'm gonna long press the jog wheel and I'm gonna choose flash int module, flash internal module. And that's gonna update the radio module inside the radio so it has the same firmware as the receiver and that'll let them talk happily to each other. And when that's done, it'll also say flash successful. Fantastic. Now I'm gonna hit the exit key and back out. And I'm gonna install the receiver back on the plug in the quadcopter. I'm also gonna just pull this little sticker off the receiver so you can easily see the LEDs on the receiver. And you know what, while I'm at it, let's just get some of this handy dandy blue tack. The next thing we need to do is bind the receiver to the controller. And what that does is that tells the receiver that it should listen to this controller. Imagine you're at a flying event and there's multiple people with controllers all flying at the same time. How does the receiver know which controller it's supposed to listen to? And more importantly, how does it you keep anybody else from like hijacking your receiver? Okay, that doesn't really happen. But binding is the process that tells the receiver which controller it should listen to. The way we're gonna bind it is we are gonna get a battery. You're gonna need a battery. And while plugging in the battery, we're gonna hold down this button, this little bind button on the receiver. And 
it's a little tricky to do that because you kind of need three hands to do it, but we're going to give it a go. There we go. You can feel the button kind of click when you press it. It's not a very robust button, so don't try and press it like with a tool or anything. But it's easy to press down on it and not realize that you haven't quite fully depressed it. So I'm going to click the button down. There we go. And... And when I've done that correctly, the red and the green LED will both be on on the receiver. If you don't have a red and a green LED, then the button may not have been fully depressed and you need to do it again. Now, if you've got a brand new radio, you can just work with the radio as delivered. But if you have been working with this radio already and you have several models already created, I'm going to ask you to create a new model just for this quadcopter. And you're going to do that by pressing the menu key one time, short press, not a long press like before, and then click the jog wheel and, oh, wait, no, hang on. Go to an empty slot, go to an empty slot, click the jog wheel and create model. The radio that we've got here is factory fresh. This is already a brand new default model. So I'm just going to work uh, with model one uh, on my radio. I'm going to press the menu key one time and then the page key one time to get to the setup screen. I'm going to scroll down to internal RF and the mode needs to be access. If it is not, just click the jog wheel until access flashes and change to access. I want you to change fail safe to no pulses. Fail safe determines what happens if the quadcopter loses uh, signal. If it goes too far and it loses range, that's called a fail safe. And when that happens, uh, no pulses is the correct response, which causes the receiver basically to turn off and the flight controller takes over and handles the fail safe condition. Then in the module line, we're going to highlight red, reg for register, and we're going to click that one time. And then we'll click enter. We should see registration OK, and when we do that, the red and green LED should begin to blink like this. Now that we've registered the receiver, the next thing we're going to do is bind it. And the reason that registration and binding are separate is that Theoretically, if you like had a bunch of controllers, because this wasn't like your first quadcopter build, you could register all your quads with all of your receivers and then easily bind the quad, moving them from controller to controller. So here's how to actually finish the bind process. We're going to scroll down to receiver one and we're going to highlight bind and it's going to say waiting for RX. And then we're going to plug in the quad to power up the receiver without holding down the bind button. When we do that, we should see select RX, RXSR pop up on screen. We'll select that receiver, and now it says bind successful. We'll see that receiver one is RXSR, and the light on the receiver is green, indicating that the bind is complete. Now these guys are talking to each other.